If you own a Porsche Boxster or 911 996 model, you may have heard about the notorious intermediate shaft bearing issue. This problem affects vehicles produced between 1997 and 2005 and can lead to catastrophic engine failure if left unaddressed. In this video, we provide a general overview on what is required to carry out an IMS bearing replacement. Replacing the IMS bearing is recommended to help prevent engine failure and keep your Boxster 996 running smoothly. Before proceeding with IMS bearing replacement using an IMS retrofit or IMS solution, LN Engineering recommends carrying out a pre-qualification procedure. This procedure, originally developed by Flat 6 Innovations, ensures the engine in your Boxster or 996 model is a suitable candidate for IMS bearing replacement. Once the pre-qualification procedure has been completed, please allow 10 to 14 hours for IMS bearing replacement. You will need special tools to carry out an IMS bearing replacement in your Porsche Boxster 996 model. LN Engineering's IMS Pro Toolkit is required when carrying out any IMS bearing replacement. Depending on whether you are fitting an IMS retrofit, or, IMS solution, additional tools may be required including the faultless IMS tool, or the IMS solution supplemental toolkit. These tools can be purchased or rented from LN Engineering. Step 1. Removing the transmission. The IMS bearing is located inside the engine and can only be accessed after removing the transmission from the vehicle. If you have a Porsche 996 model with a Tiptronic automatic transmission, the engine and transmission have to be dropped together as an assembly as the transmission cannot be easily separated from the engine while in the car. Many shops actually prefer to do this when carrying out any IMS bearing replacement. This allows for easier replacement of ancillary items like the air oil separator and the water pump. Engine removal also makes it easier to service the Vario cam wear pads found on 1997 to 2002 Porsche Boxster and 1999 to 2001 Porsche 911 models. Step 2: Removing the intermediate shaft flange. With the transmission out of the way and the flywheel or flex plate removed from the engine, the intermediate shaft flange should be visible. At this point, if you find the larger 22mm center nut, you will not be able to proceed with replacement of the IMS bearing, however using the procedure outlined in this video, you can remove the grease seal off the IMS bearing in lieu of IMS bearing replacement. This is recommended to extend the life of the larger, non-serviceable 6305 IMS bearing found in 2006 and later model year engines. If you are planning on installing an IMS solution, the bell housing will need to be notched. This should be done before removing the IMS bearing flange to prevent any debris from entering the engine. The bell housing area should be thoroughly cleaned of all residual oil and metal debris before removing the IMS flange. The intermediate shaft flange can now be removed to gain access to the IMS bearing. This involves removing the bolts that hold the cover in place as well as the center nut. Once the bolts are removed, the IMS bearing flange can be gently pried off, but only after the engine has been locked at top dead center. Camshafts locked and chain tensioners removed. These added steps prior to flange removal and IMS bearing extraction are critical as the engine can jump timing. If not corrected, this can cause engine failure or severe damage. Likewise, if the camshaft timing is out of spec even a few degrees, the IMS shaft may not be properly centered, which will cause added complications to the IMS bearing replacement. Any camshaft timing issues must be corrected before proceeding with this procedure. Step 3. IMS bearing replacement Now that the IMS flange is removed, the IMS bearing can be pulled out on models where the IMS bearing is serviceable. If the center stud is broken or breaks during extraction of the IMS bearing, the easy out tool supplied in the LN Engineering IMS Pro Toolkit will allow you to remove the bearing. On models with the larger, non-serviceable IMS bearing, the grease seal can be removed off the original IMS bearing using a small pick. Before installing the new IMS bearing, it is important to thoroughly clean the area around the bearing and remove any debris or old sealant. The replacement IMS bearing supplied with the IMS retrofit or IMS solution kit can then be installed. Step 4. Reassembly With the new IMS bearing fitted, the intermediate shaft cover and retaining flange can be reinstalled using the provided micro-encapsulated bolts and 12-point center nut, followed by the chain tensioners, 
the TDC locking pin and cam locks can then be removed. The case perimeter bolts at the rear of the engine, as well as the rear main seal should be replaced before flywheel or flex plate reinstallation. It is also highly recommended that a new dual mass flywheel, clutch, and flex plate bolts are installed as well. Finally, the transmission can then be reconnected to the engine and the axles and drive shaft on C4 models reinstalled. The oil service must be completed at this time. If an IMS solution was fitted, the provided spin on oil filter adapter and oil supply line must be installed prior to initial startup. In conclusion, IMS bearing replacement is a complex job that requires specialized tools and expertise. While it can be done by a skilled do-it-yourself mechanic, we recommend having the work done by a qualified Porsche technician who is experienced with IMS bearing replacement, by following the detailed instructions provided with the IMS retrofit and IMS solution, or having a professional carry out the IMS bearing replacement procedure, you can help prevent catastrophic engine damage and keep your Porsche Boxster or 911 996 model running smoothly for years to come. Call or visit lnengineering.com to learn more.